everyone, it's Ryan here from Green Tech Network. I finished up a pretty cool project recently and I figured I'd share it all with you guys. What you're looking at uh, is sort of my rendition of a custom built, wooden enclosed, uh, portable boombox. And I figured I'd share it with all of you um, in case you know it gives some of you some ideas on something that you think you might want to build in the future. Um, I do have a video from actually seven years ago of a much larger portable boombox that I built. Um, that one was used mainly at the beach and I decided to make something a little bit more I guess well polished, uh, professional if you want to call it that, um, and definitely more portable since it's much smaller. Here's my, my hand for scale. So I just wanted to run through some of the features. Like I said, I think it's a pretty cool project um, and you know if, if you like it you can try to build something like this yourself. Overall, this was about a 30-hour project. Um, the majority of that 30 hours was spent both um, in Google SketchUp creating the diagram and also the woodworking. The woodworking was, was pretty intense. Um, uh, I, I had to learn a decent amount about woodworking, to be honest. It was kind of outside my realm. The actual electric wiring, very simple, which I'll show you later on in the video. Uh, but starting off, let's, let's run through some of the features. Um, on the front, you have two 6.5 inch car speakers. These are by Rockford Fosgate, I believe that's how you pronounce. Um, and so the interesting thing is you can see how close these are, how flush these are with the edges. Um, and that's kind of the way I designed it. And that's why I used Google SketchUp first to make sure that absolutely everything would be almost you know, within perfect tolerances. Um, you can see I can't, can't even fit my finger in this gap when you're working with maybe you know, a couple millimeters of, of overhang there. Same goes on the bottom. Um, so that was one thing that I really wanted. I wanted it to be pretty much just speaker on the front. Um, so like I said, that's something you really can only achieve uh, by using Google SketchUp once you have the speakers and, and the equipment you're using and even, even the battery. Uh, yeah, I rendered the battery inside it. Up on the top, actually powering everything, we have a Lapai LP2020A Plus amplifier which I actually reviewed in one of my previous videos. Uh, this is a you know entry-level miniature amplifier. I don't think these are actually sold anymore. I believe they've been replaced with a different version, um, a more upgraded version. I believe it uses a uh, TI, Texas Instruments, audio amplifier. Um, I, I can put a link to the, to the um, replacement in the video description. But this is basically a 20 watts per channel RMS amplifier. Um, you know, you have your on-off switch in the front. Uh, this is, you can change the, uh, the, the bass and treble of, of the audio you're listening to. Uh, here we have on the left the treble knob, bass knob, and then, uh, most importantly, the volume knob. So depending on if you want, you know, super loud for like long distance music, you can turn the bass down and really crank it up without having too much speaker distortion. Or if you're listening, you know, in a more enclosed environment, you can turn the bass up if you want, you know, some better bass response, and uh, you know, maybe turn the treble down a bit. Kind of depends on what you want. So that's definitely a nice feature. Um, over here on the right, we actually have a USB phone charger. So this was an addition uh, after I had already fully completed, um, you know, the entire system. I, I wasn't planning on adding this additionally. However, I had a, an old um, USB car charger laying around, so I just cracked it open. Um, you can see the glue isn't the nicest, the hot glue around it um, isn't my best job to be honest. Uh, but there was a lot of air leakage coming out of here, you know when the speakers are moving uh, you have to have a very tight box, enclosed box to make sure the sound you know, sounds good. So I, used, I had to use a ton of hot glue around here to make sure the air wasn't um, uh, whooshing back and forth and making sound as it passed through these USB ports. If you're looking for something similar, I would recommend maybe something that's designed for um, uh, uh, water application, so it, it would be waterproof and therefore uh, most likely airtight uh, as well. If you're looking for some sort of, there, there's, some, there's some that um, that are for marine applications, I believe. Over here on the right, this switch actually just controls the USB power. Um, doesn't control the amp. You know, the amp has the uh, the, the power switch right there. Coming around back here, uh, what we have is some of the um, connections available on this amp. So you have your standard um, right-left audio input, 
your auxiliary input, just a headphone jack, the right channel, left channel, and then the DC 12 volt uh, power port that runs to the internal battery uh, inside there. And I'll just get a back shot of this so you can see the screws. Um, I wanted it pr to look pretty symmetrical so you can see two here, like t you know, two in each corner, one in the middle, two in each corner. While we're on the topic of, I guess, screws, I'll come around and show you this side as well. So, the interesting thing about this is that if you look at this wood, it's pretty thin. I believe this is quarter inch plywood um, that, that I purchased. I want to say it's pine. And you really can't drill sideways into quarter inch plywood. It's pretty much impossible uh, without, without cracking the wood or having your drill bit, you know, go through the, come through the side. So what's actually inside here, and actually I'm going to open this up in a second, is a wooden frame that basically runs with uh, half inch oak uh, beams or strips or whatever you want to call them. So it's half inch by half inch. And it's sort of like an a internal skeleton that runs throughout the portion of the entire enclosure. And that's where all of these pieces are drilled into. So you can imagine, you know, uh, half inch oak here, half inch oak here. So that's why you have your uh, screws kind of up in the corner as they're running into that, uh, that half inch frame that runs throughout the entire internal portion of the enclosure. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, these, these have to be pretty close uh, tolerances because you do want something that's relatively, or not relatively, you do want something that's airtight. Uh, you know, the more air you have coming in and out of the case, the more kind of excess sound you're going to hear, kind of like a, almost like a vibrating whooshing noise as the air is coming in and out of the case due to the speakers moving. Um, so what I'm going to do is open this up now. I've gone ahead and opened up the enclosure. And before I talk about, you know, the internal components, I think one of the cooler things, um, if I do say so myself, that I implemented with this um, is, if you noticed, it was very easy for me to unscrew the top. These are actually threaded inserts that you, you kind of crank into um, the, the wood oak there. And when you have a machine screw, it just threads in nice and easy, you know, no problem. So you're not wearing down potentially the wood each time you're taking screws in and out. And there's some, some writing from when I was putting it all together. Um, so that was, you know, one of the, one of the cooler things I think uh, that you know added a nice little touch it makes it very easy to take the lid off and on um, with you know very little problems and you know while I'm on the topic of this you can see this is that internal structure that I was talking about the internal sort of framing structure so you can see how it runs throughout the enclosure and in all honesty that was probably the the longest part that it took to make um, basically I would mount piece by piece you know I started out, let's say, with this side, I would mount this piece, then I would take this side, mount this piece, so on and so forth, until I kind of had all of the frame pieces actually mounted on the sides, and then I put all of this, you know, imagine folding up all the sides um, to match that frame. It was a huge pain, like I said, I mean, I probably spent 20 hours alone just on the woodworking. But getting past that, um, inside here, so this is the actual battery. This is just a standard 12 amp hour, or excuse me, 12 volt, 7 amp hour uh, battery. And it just has some um, quick release prongs that, that grab onto the battery. Um, some of the wires run up to the amplifier to power it. And these other kind of uh, 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 copper looking wires run to the switch and the, the rear of the USB ports. And as I said, I had a lot of air coming in and out of that USB port, so it's pretty much all slathered up in, uh, in um, a hot glue just to keep the airflow from, from coming in and out. 
uh, and you know, it's just pretty basic. You just have to switch in between the battery and the, uh, the, the five volt USB charger. Here's the rear of the speakers. Um, nothing too special there. Um, you know, just your standard speaker magnets. I actually have, you know, a little bit of space available here if I wanted to make it a little bit more compact, but generally the more compact you make an enclosure, the worst audio response you're going to experience with that enclosure. Um, so I didn't, you know, I could have made it a little smaller, but I figured, what the heck, you know, why not just, you know, keep it kind of the way it is and, and have a little bit potentially better audio response. That's pretty much it with this speaker. Um, there is, I guess there is one more thing. This battery, you can see how it wobbles back and forth a little bit. It's actually held by some like industrial grade Velcro. So I can take the battery out if I need to. Um, so if I turn this thing upside down, the battery's gonna stay there. I mean, I've dropped it and all kinds of stuff and the battery's totally fine, doesn't wiggle around. Um, it was, I think it was like 15 bucks for a little strip of Velcro, the length of this battery. But it had something like 60 pound um, uh, rated um, hold strength, so you know, I was like, that sounds like more than enough for this battery. The last final, uh, I guess, portion of this speaker are the little feet down below, and these are just you can see all the sand on there from when I bring it to the beach. Um, these are just some little standard, you know, rubber feet you can buy at a woodworking store for a couple bucks, um, and these were just so that the bottom of the speaker doesn't get beat up if I'm putting it on concrete or, or asphalt or something like that. But as you can see, the feet do, do not help with sand, especially dry sand that's very uneven. And uh, the finish I put on it actually doesn't really help. It's kind of like a, a lacquer, if you want to call it that. I'm not a woodworking professional, so I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Um, but it's kind of sticky, especially in the sun. So the sand really likes to, really likes to stick to it, you can see here doesn't even come off when I rub it. So that's okay though, the sand's, the sand's part of the speaker now. So I'm sure you all wanna hear some sort of audio test um, and I will indulge that. However, you know, with anything you're recording on a video camera, it, it's not gonna really do it any justice unless you hear it in person. Um, but what I can tell you is that this speaker can easily play for a group, a group of 30, 40 people um, at the pool and probably around 20, 30 people at the beach, since you know the beach is a little bit louder with the ocean crashing and everything. But you can easily hear this, um, you know, bass included from anywhere between 50 and, and 100 feet away, no problem at all. Um, it gets very loud, um, especially if you want to turn the bass down a little bit so you're not, um, you know, risking bottoming out those speakers. You can, you can crank it up pretty high. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, play something real quick, but like I said, not gonna really do it any justice. You're gonna have to take my word for it in person. and uh, pretty loud, cons all things considered, you know, looking at 6.5 inch speakers. And before I wrap it up with kind of my final thoughts, um, I realized that I did forget to mention the battery light. So far, I've been able to run this for about six to seven hours at full volume, um, and the battery only takes about three hours to charge on a 12 volt, one amp, steel lead acid battery charger. So I'm assuming in those six to seven hours, I'm really only using about half of the battery's capacity. So, you know, in all honesty, this thing probably lasts close to 12 hours, if I had to guess. Um, that is kind of dependent on the loudness, the music type, um, and also definitely if you're using the, uh, the USB charging function, that'll, that'll take up some more power. But overall, um, in practice, you know, in the field, you probably should expect about 10 hours of playtime off of this. Um, so, you know, overall, I'm, I'm super pleased with the design and the performance of, you know, both the speakers, uh, the amp, and the battery life. Um, and like I said, you know, kind of wrapping it all up, 
Um, I do have some recommendations for people who are potentially trying something similar in the future. Um, number one, definitely use some sort of uh, Google SketchUp, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, um, you know, whatever it is, if you want very tight uh, tolerances. If you don't care about the tolerances, it's not a huge deal. Um, but that's pretty much a must if you, if you want to make it as kind of compact as I did. Um, furthermore, I would recommend getting your pieces of wood, so the main external panels, getting those cut professionally. Um, I got them done at a woodworking store because there's no way I'd be able to cut these as straight as they're cut now with just a uh, handsaw, um, un you know, unless you have the, uh, the, the proper tools and equipment. I definitely would recommend getting the pieces cut professionally. Um, on top of that, on the topic of wood, I would recommend with going something a little bit thicker in terms of the plywood so that you don't have to build that internal frame. Um, maybe half an inch plywood would, would be enough. Like I said, this is quarter inch and there's no way I can drill into quarter inch, you know, directly straight in. Additionally, um, I would recommend a different type of uh, uh, sealant or lacquer that I used. Like I said, it's kind of sticky. I mean, even, even now it's still a little bit sticky and you can see the reflection of the blue light um, you know, from it. And like I said, the thing attracts sand and, and dust like you wouldn't believe. I mean, this stuff comes off kind of easy. But down here on the bottom, I mean, this is, this is almost part of the speaker now. Like I said, it, it doesn't come off. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, additionally, if it's possible, I've, I've considered it. I've considered repainting this uh, the amp, and the reason being is because I mainly use this outdoors in the sun, um, on the beach, at the pool, and it gets direct sun exposure. And the amp does get kind of hot in the sun, and you know how hot inside I can't tell you, but I'd assume that you know, raising the temperature, especially if it's running high volume, um, isn't good for the internal circuitry. And black, you know, absorbs sunlight, therefore makes it even hotter. So I've considering, I've considered repainting this white, but I do like, you know, being able to see the, the text on it. I think it looks kind of cool. So that's still to be determined, uh, to be honest. But I've been using it for a while, and I haven't had any overheating issues. I usually throw a t-shirt, like a white t-shirt on top, and then in terms of, I guess, improvements for yourself and, and even myself now, um, the last thing that I really considered is implementing some sort of Bluetooth, fun Bluetooth functionality. Um, so right now I am limited to the aux input, uh, which is what I use standard. And I, I do have a six foot cable, so it's you know nice and long, and I can kind of move around with my phone a bit. But I really would like uh, a Bluetooth 4.0 at the minimum, preferably 5.0 because my new phone supports it. Um, that way, you know, I can be potentially 30 feet away from the speaker and still be able to play music through it. But other than that, um, you know, I think it's a pretty finished product and I don't really have any other potential changes um, or recommendations except for uh, what, I, what I just said, and then that, that Bluetooth module, most definitely. Maybe I'll throw it inside and then put, a, put another switch down here or something. I'm still planning that out. Um, but I do appreciate you all checking my video out, um, and I hope that you know, you've either learned something or that you decided to potentially build something like this yourself. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, um, and, and I do appreciate, like I said, you all tuning in and watching. Thanks.